Four truss. Get it? Like four trusses. If you want more bad jokes, stay subscribed to Linus Tech Tips. The Cooler Master Neptune 240M features an exclusive pump design and their new Silencio fans to provide impressive near silent performance. Click now to learn more. The Fortress FT-05 is the more expensive, smaller, and more refined little brother to the Raven RV-05, a similar case by Silverstone. It first shows us this refined style with its front panel. A very sleek and clean looking metal finish accented only by a reflective strip along the bottom, which has an illuminated Silverstone logo behind it, and the slot loading optical drive bay on the right hand side. The left side panel is a plain metal finish with a relatively small window cutout and that same reflective strip along the bottom, just without the Silverstone logo this time. My only gripe with this particular panel is that I would have liked to see the window shifted up a little bit. This would have pulled the expansion cards and a little bit more of the motherboard into view and done a better job of hiding the cable clutter at the bottom. Also, the right side panel is more or less the same as this left side panel, just without the window cut out. At the front of the top of the case, we have a set of solid and satisfying power and reset buttons, which are on either side of a flip cover, which hides the audio headers, dual USB 3.0 ports, and two fan switches, which have high, medium, and low settings, despite only being labeled for high and low. Behind the top IO, we have more top IO. Because of how the motherboard is oriented, once you slide the protective grill back and lift it off of the case, you're able to access all of your motherboard and expansion card IO along with the power in for your power supply unit. All the cables that you would need to run to the top of your case because of how the IO is laid out are managed through a sizable porthole in the back of the tower. Below this cable management hole is the grill and removable fan filter for your power supply. And while I do really appreciate removable fan filters, this one can be a little bit frustrating to remove as it doesn't have anything to grab onto and it is set into the case. I would have appreciated if they had the fan filter do a slide in mechanism through the top of the case instead, which is actually what I thought they intended when I first saw it, but it's not. And for the last stop on our tour of the outside of the FT-05 is the underside, which is going to be fantastic for anyone who intends to keep their computer on a carpeted surface. To explain this, the bottom of the tower is completely flat and solid, made of metal, and just has four little miniature rubber feet, allowing for extremely limited airflow, and largely removes gross dust and particle pickup, which would be expected from a computer with a bottom intake, which is placed on a carpeted surface. But to allow for pretty much any airflow at all, there is a fairly sizable gap built into the bottom, which allows the two large 180 millimeter air penetrator fans to breathe quite deeply through their removable fan filter, which is also tucked in neatly under the bottom of the case. Silverstone notes in their very detailed manual that you can remove the filter by simply pulling it to the side, but this doesn't seem entirely possible due to a plastic lip, which actually helps keep the filter in place. I would alternatively suggest that you just place your hands on both sides of the case and pry down on the fan filter with your fingers, pulling it directly off instead of attempting to slide it off. The doors on this case are quite unconventional. To open them, you will need to venture back up to the top of the case, reaching under the lip of the side panel, and you will find a hidden switch. In one fluid motion, you can both press the switch and pull up the side panel, freeing it from the case. Quite elegant overall, I would like to note, but please also note that you will need to press the switch down when installing the doors instead of just pressing on them to get them back into position. Please don't break that little switch. Another thing I noticed when removing the doors was the shape of the support structure for said doors. It lends itself to the function of being a handle as well. Now I didn't find this feature noted anywhere in their manual, but they seem very solid and easy to grab hold of, so I decided to ogre test it. They passed with flying colors, luckily enough, so you heard it here first. The FT-05 also happens to feature handles. Once you enter the main compartment, you'll be able to see exactly how those large 180mm fans in the bottom will be able to cool your various components. Because of this awesome cooling setup, we decided to install an air cooler and not bother with its fans, as said included fans will be able to take care of it already, which results in a quiet and quite cool looking setup. 
but if you want to install a liquid cooler, you would be able to fit the radiator either in the 120 millimeter grill slot above the CPU socket, or you could remove the dual 180 millimeter fans in the bottom and install up to a two by 140 millimeter radiator or a three by 120 millimeter radiator in that bottom placement. On the left hand side, we have a squeeze mount hard drive cage, which is quite easy to use and holds the hard drives quite securely while allowing for a securing screw if you're worried about them at all. Above the cage is a vertically installed power supply. It is recommended to install a power supply no longer than 160 millimeters here, but if you did need more space for a longer power supply, you could remove the hard drive cage below, allowing essentially any consumer power supply to fit just fine. This tower allows for up to 314.2 millimeter long graphics cards and 162 millimeter tall CPU coolers. The CPU cooler spec does seem a little bit conservative though, but that kind of makes sense because Silverstone probably doesn't want your cooler pressed up against the window, which is definitely understandable. That brings us to the inside view of the Silverstone logo from the front of the case, which I would have really liked to see in black plastic instead of white as it is visible from the outside through the window and sticks out like a sore thumb. The wires also don't help with large unsleeved sections close to that white panel. Behind the motherboard tray, there are two well-placed and easy to use SSD mounting spots and the installation housing for the slimline optical drive that we noticed on the front of the case. The cable management options back here are quite limited, however. With only a couple zap straps, hooks, and no default runs, it can get a little messy. And while the motherboard tray is quite solid, which feels quite nice, it's also kind of annoying because there's a lot of support structure behind the motherboard, which will definitely obstruct your cable runs. Last but not least, there's the fact there is no rubber grommets to hide the cable mess, which is visible through the left side of the case and that side window. In conclusion, this is an absolutely beautiful case. If you're looking for a refined, sleek, and elegant look, which uses solid metal construction throughout, it will perform quite well. It also performs quite well in air-cooled environments, thanks to that built-in airflow allowance to the Beast 180 millimeter air penetrators in the bottom of the case. But it does suffer from the cable management department. A poorly sleeved power supply and stock wires from the front I.O. paired with a complete lack of rubber grommets can hamper the overall look, which is greatly disappointing when compared to the extreme attention to detail given to the rest of the tower. Speaking of attention to detail, our friends over at Chiro have a fantastic new product that they would like us to show off today. Well, technically it's a series of new products that they have titled their Flavors lineup. These are an adaptation of their wildly popular Danport 10,400 milliamp hour portable battery bank that we showcased in this video. Not sure where they're gonna put that. They have seven new flavors for any type of taste. Chocolate, vanilla, banana, vint, matcha, which is Brandon's favorite. Strawberry, which is Linus's favorite. I'm sure you can see why it's freaking pink. And pumpkin, hmm, that's pretty cool that they're releasing a pumpkin one so close to Halloween, eh? Yes, it is. And Chiro thinks so too. So they're offering a special deal on their pumpkin flavor in the celebration of Halloween. From October 31st to November 2nd, the pumpkin flavor will be available through Amazon for $29.99 on the first 50 units. That's ridiculous. And $39.99 for every unit after that, which is still fairly ridiculous. You can check out their whole flavors lineup in the link in the video description. And I want you guys to let us know in the comments, do you have any kind of choice like which which one is your favorite color does it even really matter to you i'm sure they'd love to hear what you have to say so let us know in the comments down below also in the comments down below let me know what you thought of the fto5 if you don't like commenting below videos and you don't like youtube comments you can jump over to the forum if you don't like the ads while you're there you can become an awesome subscriber person yeah! that's how awesome and get rid of all the ads on the forum and jump back to youtube and subscribe because we make cool videos and stuff. Also like and dislike, depending on which color you like, that doesn't make any sense, but do it anyways, and I'll see you guys next time.